All right, good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy Sunday. Um, my thought for you today, since we are in the season of Lent, the season of fasting, um, is to take this as an opportunity, right? So I've been saying this week and laughing, not laughing this week, but saying this week that, you know, Lenting, Lenten fasting is not part of my tradition. It's not something I grew up with, but take any and all excuses to practice, right? Any and all excuses that come up in the world, take it as an opportunity to practice because there's something there. So this concept of fasting is not foreign to yoga at all. Yoga says that, you know, fasting is incredibly beneficial, um, but the attitude that we have while we're fasting also makes an incredible difference, right? So you can take away everything that you think is the distraction or everything that you think is the bad habit or everything that you think is the bad influence. You can take it away, make yourself miserable and you will continue to be miserable, right? <laughs> you might break some sort of attachment just to the habit that you have of, of um, associating with that thing, but it won't change the place in your mind that says, I need that. Right? You'll find something else to replace it with. This is what we understand. That this is what the mind does. So the attitude in yoga is that if you are fasting, and I think this is probably the original intention of Lent as well, that if you are fasting from something that holds you very stuck with its energy, right, in, in the attachment we have to it, as you let it go, what you're able to return to is so much more vast and so much more important and so much more potentially innately loving to yourself than whatever you're giving up, right? Whatever you're letting go of. So if you're fasting in whatever version, whether it's physical or it's in a mental, emotional way, because we can do that too, is it's not important the thing that you're letting go of. What is important is what you're returning to, right? So as you let go of the outside influences, what rises up into that space is innately your own spirit, innately your own body, innately your own mind, right? So we don't have to be in this war with ourselves that our mind is somehow always getting us into trouble. It does, right? Because it's unfocused, but we don't have to be at war, right? We can be in a place that says that innately my mind is very good for me. My body is very good for me, right? My soul is able to inhabit this in a very skillful way. So we let go of whatever we're stuck on outside. So we return to that. So that's the suggestion is that if you are fasting in any version, and I recommend that you take the opportunity to fast in any version so that you can start to return to what is innately you, right? Start to understand what is innately you versus what is something that you just reach for. So comfortable seat if you're not there already letting the eyes close. And my challenge to myself during this time is I'm fasting on a mental level. So I'm fasting from complaining. So if you hear me complain, you've got to call me out so that I notice that I'm doing it. Comfortable seat, eyes closed for a moment. And let your breath get long and deep. And I say, let your breath get long and deep because the breath, when you don't control it, will become long and deep. Right, so there's the practice of pranayama where we say I'm directing or I'm controlling my breath for a purpose. And then there's the moment when you stop trying to control. You let yourself feel innately, what does my breath want to do? And it might be that your inhales get deeper and you feel that you have to pause and hold the breath if that feels good. It might feel that you have to exhale for a little longer. And can you do whatever it is that innately it feels like you should do and don't judge it? Huge in this season, huge in this tradition of fasting is that whatever emotions, whatever feelings come up as the attachment to the thing and in response to letting it go, don't judge it. It's really the practice that we have all the time is maybe fast from your judgment. The need to label that this moment is a good one or a bad one. Just feel the breath for another moment, relaxing the shoulders. Noticing that as you release control, the breath still comes. As you release direction, the breath still comes. 
So you let go of holding, the breath will leave, but it will come back. And start to cat cow your spine seated still with the eyes closed if you'd like, or they can open, but start to move your spine a little bit or a lot. And there's a story, yogic story that goes a little bit like this and says that there's a group of monks that are traveling around and in, you know, ancient times, yogic times, um, it was common for monks to essentially be beggars is they would live off of the offerings that was given to them by people around them. So they would go from town to town or house to house and people would feed them. And so this group of monks, young monks that were following a head monk were walking around and every time they came to a house or a village and they were being fed, the head monk would take all of the meat right, from the food that they were given. And he would give everything else, the rice and some of the vegetables to the young monks. And they started to get really annoyed because they're like, hey, how come you get all the best food? Like we're hungry here. Why aren't we sharing this equally? How come you get to eat the meat, but we have to eat the, the boring stuff, the stuff that doesn't taste as good. Consider that the mind that says, I want, I want, I want. And come back to stillness, please. Walk your hands forward in front of you so the legs are still crossed. Just walk your hands straight forward into a forward fold. And you can let your elbows go wide here if you can come that close to the floor, resting the forehead on the uh, hands or on a block. And if you don't come that close to the floor, don't worry. Just hang out where you are. And again, let the spine expand. So breathe into that space of the lower back. Good, if this isn't comfortable for the knees or the ankles, make sure that you change the position maybe coming into Baddha Konasana or simply stretching the legs out. And so finally the head monk says, okay. He says, if you really want to eat the same as me, then the next place that we go, he says, whatever we are given, you'll eat it. No excuses, no ifs, ands, or buts, right? The monk's like, yeah, of course, sure. And so they go to the next village and the monk, head monk finds his way to the blacksmith and speaks to him for a moment and comes back with a bowl full of steaming nails, right? Red hot nails. And he hands it to the young monk and he says, okay, here it is, this was our offering, eat it. And he's like, what are you talking about? I can't eat that, it's freaking molten metal. Are you crazy? And the head monk says, oh, you see a difference here and takes some of the steam, some of that metal and just eats it, right? No problem at all. I know, sounds weird. There's a point, I promise, good. One more breath where you are. And then walk yourself back up to that seated position. Inhale the arms up to the sky. Take a twist to your right, left hand to right knee, right hand back behind you. And find your breath there, drawing the low belly in, dropping through your seat, navel to spine. So again, you're drawing the front body into the back body, get really full through your lower back. Good. And then come back to center, inhale the arms up to the sky, twist the other way, right hand to left knee, left hand back behind you. Again, focusing on drawing the low belly, drawing the ribs and dropping through your seat. So you're getting wider through your lower back. Good, ribs soft, shoulders soft. And then come back to center, please. Reading the hands, rest on the knees or the thighs, palms facing up or down, your choice, eyes closed again. The moral of the story is the head monk says to the young monk, he says, you still see a difference. You still make this judgment that some things are good and some things are bad. And that's why I've been separating the things that you're ingesting because your mind is still attached, right? Your mind still wants just what it thinks tastes good. It's not looking at things in that underlying way that everything is the same. Everything is Brahman. Everything is energy is prana. It's no difference the thing that tastes really good or the malt and metal, he says, there's no difference. So for him, he was at a place where it didn't matter. He could eat whatever, it didn't disturb his mind. He said, for you, your mind will still be disturbed. And so for your own benefit, I've been taking that influence away so that your mind could stay clear so that you could practice. So consider your mind that wants and wants and wants and wants. 
And that that loving action of let me take away this one thing, let me separate this one thing that you want so much so that you can feel the quiet inside that's beyond the wanting. So that you can feel the place inside that's not looking for just what tastes good, but what is good, what is innately good for you. This is why we fast. So that everything that comes into our life, we regard with the same amount of respect and blessing. Hands at heart center, please, palm to palm. We'll open with the sound of Om, deep breath in. And let the eyes float open. Nice, you guys, you can re release the hands from in front of the heart center, come forward to hands and knees. It's fun to do story time at the beginning of class. Good, find your way back to downward facing dog, please. Good, pedal your feet just a little bit. Nice. And then start to walk your feet forward towards your hands. Good, so as you come to that standing forward fold, feet underneath your hips, bend your knees, drop your belly onto your thighs, wrap your arms around the backs of your legs, drop your head. Good, so you're squeezing in. Push your inner knees just a little wider so that you have this feeling of pushing your thighs wide and then press through the big toe mounds of your feet. Scoop your low belly, push your butt towards the sky, start to straighten your legs, but stay hugged in. So you're doing a standing forward pull, but you're hugging the legs. So you start to press your hips up, press your heels down, keep widening those inner knees and the inner thighs. Good. It doesn't matter if the legs come all the way to straight, but keep drawing the belly in and pressing up through the low sacrum. Good. And then bend your knees again, still hugging the legs. You got it, Lauren. You're doing it right. Good. And then again, round your belly, press your butt towards the sky, start to straighten the legs any amount, push your inner knees and your inner thighs wide. This is important. Wake up the outer legs, bend the knees again, dropping the hips, drop your head, drop your shoulders, squeeze those legs, but curl your belly in and then start to straighten any amount, push your hips up towards the sky, press through your heels, stay hugged in. If the hugging in means you can't straighten your legs all the way, that's what it means. Just hug in. Good. And stay at that moment where you're like, okay, this is enough. Nice. And then release the hands down to the floor, please. Heel toe your feet a little wider so that your baby toes are parallel with the short edges of your mat, but your feet are as wide as your mat. Good. Right hand plants underneath the shoulder. Left arm comes to the sky or to your lower back, your choice. Good. Yep, you got it, Mia. Nice, you guys. If you're uh, physically touching the floor comfortably, push into that right hand. So as you push into that hand, pull your right armpit up away from the floor and navel in. Take the left upper shoulder, left rib cage a little higher. Good. Pull through your left fingertips. Nice. And then release that hand back down to the floor and switch. Left hand presses down, right arm comes to the sky. So your legs here, you're still pushing your inner thighs wide. So that pushing wide action is gonna help really open up the outer hips, the outer thighs. And that's also going to help make space in the lower back. So push wide, good. Pressing into your left fingertips, right rib cage stacks a little higher, pull through the right fingertips. You have this real feeling of reaching through both arms. Nice, Anne. Good, and then release both hands down to the floor, please. Bend both knees, drop your thighs parallel to the floor. Good, and then bring your right forearm inside your right shin. So you're not in a full squat, just thighs parallel to the floor. Right forearm inside right shin. Yep, press that arm against the shin, hug the shin against the arm, take your left arm up to the sky. So you're in like a weird squatting twist. Good, you gotta scoop your belly. So you're a little too low, Laura. Hips parallel with the floor. Good, and then release that hand, come back to center. Bring the left forearm to the inside of the left shin. I know your butt's gotta do some work here. Take the right arm up. Good, so here you still have this feeling of pulling the inner thighs, sit bones wide, press through those big toe mounds. Good, and that little squeeze of the shins is gonna help stabilize you. Press your butt back. Good, nice, Jessica. Nice, Lydia. Release the hand to the floor, please. Straighten your legs, drop your head as you fold forward. Good. And then heel toe your, foot, your feet a little closer underneath the hips again, please. 
Beautiful. Bend your knees, roll up the spine one vertebra at a time from your navel. So draw the navel in to help support. Head is the last thing to arrive. Good. And then right knee pulls up in towards your chest. Good, squeeze that knee in. And then take your right thigh on top of your left, wrapping the legs for Garudasana, eagle. So right thigh comes over the left, shin presses against the left, bend your left knee. Good, so dropping towards that chair pose, left arm comes over top of right in front of your chest, wrap the arms. Good, so the same feeling, right? Your shins are pressing together, but your inner thighs are trying to pull apart. So don't just squeeze everything in. Press your shins together, widen your thighs, scoop your low belly, and then bring your elbows forward to touch your knees. Good. As you come forward, round your back, drop your hips lower. Good. And try and push those inner thighs wide, push your sit bones wide. Nice. And now scoop your low belly, keep your hips just as low, start to lift your chest back up to vertical. Keep your hips just as low. Yeah. Even drop lower, some of you. Nice. Good, Mia. Nice, Marlene. Good, slowly unwind, please. Inhaling both arms up to the sky. Good, right hand holds your left wrist, please. Pull to your right side body stretch. Good, pressing into the feet. Nice, now Pam, just watch that your feet don't turn out. Looks like they're turning out. There you go. Good, so you're still leaning over to the right, but now I want you to take that lean towards the upper right-hand corner of your mat. So round through your upper back a little bit and dive towards that upper right-hand corner. So you're still drawing long through the wrist, but now you're curling into your back body. So the tops of your thighs go back, round into your ribs. Good, and then stay with that rounding, but start to open the left armpit, the left shoulder again, rotate back towards the sky. Don't let your hip rotate with you. Good. And then all the way back up to center. If you did all of that with your navel not holding you at all, consider using your navel on the second side. <laughs> Switch your hands, please. Left hand holds your right wrist, pull to your left. All right, I say that because again, we can love a stretch like this and we just pull and we use the weight to try and get us to feel something. But if we're not stabilizing, then the body just feels like it's getting yanked around, right? Don't yank yourself around. That's the energy of craving, of attachment, right? As we get yanked around to this thing, to that thing, now back to this thing, now to that thing. And oh, don't forget about that other thing. Soften that grip and return to what is innately beneath that, which is simpler, quieter. Good, round into your back, please. Reach for that upper left-hand corner of your mat. Good. Yeah, rounding, rounding, rounding. So this should take some of the pressure out of the lower spine if you were unconsciously arching there. And then start to take that right armpit open again, right rib cage open, but keep that feeling of drawing your ribs in, drawing your navel in. So you're opening again to that side stretch. Good. And then come all the way back up to center. Nice, Sandy. Beautiful. And then left knee, release the hands. Left knee comes up and towards your chest. Good. Squeeze that knee in. And then cross the left thigh over top of the right, wrapping the inner thighs, outer shins for eagle. Bend the right knee, please. As the knee bends, your butt goes slightly back in space. And again, you're pressing the shins together. Make that a big focus so that you really internally rotate the knees. You really internally rotate the thighs. Right arm comes on top of left in front of your chest. Good. So really focus on I'm trying to draw those knees inward so that I get that full rotation on my hips. Good. And then start to take the elbows forward towards your knees, pressing the shins together, pull your inner thighs as wide apart as you can. Seems counterintuitive, but try. Squeeze the shins, spread your sit bones wide. Good, and scoop your belly. Now drop your hips a little lower, cause you can. Yeah, I know, it's all right if you fall. And then take your chest up again, so as vertical as you can, keep your hips low. Nice, Carla. Good. <laughs> Smile, please, if you're falling out of your pose my request. And then slowly come on out, please. Unwind, inhale the arms up to the sky. Good. Exhale, fold forward, hands to the floor. Good. Success or failure, you should smile the same. That is the suggestion. Just don't let your mind go into that place that judges this was a good moment or a bad moment. Nice, you guys. One more breath, soften the knees a little bit. As you soften the knees, you can soften the lower back. Awesome. And then step your feet back to downward facing dog. 
Good. Take your right ankle over your left thigh, please. So a cross-legged down dog, right ankle over left thigh in down dog, right ankle crosses over left thigh like you were doing cross-legged chair, but you're in down dog. Good. And then bend your left knee and pull that knee forward towards your belly as you press your hips back, almost like you're going to drop your butt onto your left heel. So fold in again, almost like you're doing that cross-legged chair. You got it. You just got a uh, right ankle in front of your left thigh on you, like you're doing cross-legged chair. Right ankle in front of left thigh. Good, but the knee bent, foot off the floor. Nope, other foot. <laughs> All right, close enough. Unwind that leg, take the right leg up and back behind you, down dog split. We'll get it on the other side. Awesome, you guys. Step that right foot between the hands, please lunge. Good, left foot steps a little wider, drop the foot to 45 degrees, warrior one. So your toes are not all the way to the side, they're halfway. And then inhale, both arms up to the sky. Good, hip points facing straight ahead. So check out if your feet are too narrow, too close to each other towards the midline, that's going to be very difficult to do. So separate your feet a little wider, give your hips space. And then for a moment, straighten the front thigh. Good. And as you straighten the front leg, pull up through your low belly, lift your hip points up so your pelvis isn't automatically tilting forward. It gets a little bit more level. Take your arms out wide, cactus arms, both legs are still straight. Start to twist to your right just a little bit. Good, as you twist to the right, you draw the low rib cage back. Still take that inner thigh of the back leg up and away so that there's that feeling of widening the feet or widening the legs. Awesome. And now with that feeling of twist, keep your rib cage twisting the same way, but bring your chest back towards the front of your mat. So you're still trying to turn the ribs to the right, but you're bringing your chest square to the top of your mat again. I know you're like, that doesn't make sense. It does. Keep trying to draw that outer right waistline back. Good. Now stretch the arms up to the sky, bend your right knee coming into warrior one, resist the forward action. So you still lift that front of the pelvic bones. Good. And you can, yeah, you can totally stay in the twist if that works for you. The idea is just that you're drawing that right waistline, your hip point and your rib cage wide to the right. That doesn't stop happening. Good. One more breath. You guys pull that back thigh up and away and then take your torso forward, parallel to the floor. Don't change the legs. Pull that right butt cheek back and in. Stretch the arms reaching back behind you. Don't hold the hands. Just reach back as though you were going to. Good. Squeeze the arms towards each other like you have a block between your hands. Lift your arms a little higher. Good. Pull your rib cage in. Lift your chest a little higher. Good. You got to really use your butt here. Bring that right knee forward over your right ankle. Good, Allison. You got it. One more breath. Lift those arms a little higher. Good. And then release the hands down to the floor, please. Spin your back heel up. Left hand plants right arm to the sky. Spinal twist. Good. Front knee is over the front ankle. So leave me left forward just a little more with the knee, with the knee. There you go. Good, you guys. And then release that hand down to the floor. Both hands come inside the front foot. Drop your back knee, please. And then flex your right foot a lot. Come onto the baby toe edge of that foot. Let your knee drop wide. Yep. Yeah. So you're on the baby toe edge of your right foot, letting that right knee drop wide. Almost, I call it, I call it halfway to pigeon. I don't know what else to refer to it as. Good. Because you're not coming into full pigeon, but it's the same action, right? It's the same rotation. Walk your hands forward just a little bit more. Nice. Maybe come down to your forearms if that's available to you, or just stay where you are and breathe through those big muscles of the hip, of the thigh. And navel to spine here. Good. Your lower back is bothering you. Maybe keep the front foot flat or take your feet closer to each other so your lunge is not so long. My right? part of the challenge that we have with the lower back is that it gets aggravated when our legs are not well integrated action-wise, muscular-wise into what we're doing. So our structure gets pulled out of alignment. When it's out of alignment, then what does it do? It starts pushing on nerves. It starts inhibiting things. So simple solution and all of our solutions in yoga are ultimately simple. We just don't like that they're so simple is to bring your legs a little closer so that there's not that feeling of the legs being so far away from the pelvis. One more breath, wherever you are, since I don't think anyone was listening to that lecture, walk your hands back up. 
<laughs> Good. Take that right foot back to flat. I know you are all listening, but I don't know if it made sense to anybody. Lift that back knee, please. Good. And then step back to downward facing dog. I'll say it anyway. It seeps into your subconscious somewhere. Good. Slide forward to plank pose, upward push up. Lower down slow to your belly. Good. And then rise up little baby cobra. So press down into the tops of your feet and just come up a tiny, tiny bit from your ribs, from your belly. Lift up and then lower back down. Good. And then lift up just a little bit higher. Again, pulling the navel in, ribs in so that you're coming off of the floor from the lowest part of you, not from the highest part of you. And then release back down. Again, focusing right here on the floor. Try to pull up through your belly and through your low ribs and then start to extend the chest forward to find cobra. Good. And you feel that drawing of the shoulder blades onto the back. Nice. And then release it back down. Good. One more time. Drawing from the low belly, from the low ribs, start to drag your chest forward. Shoulders should come beyond the tips of the fingers as you rise up. Nice. And then release, please. Press back to hands and knees. Take a brief child's pose. Again, because the request is hips and also low back, cannot forget child's pose. Reminder that I am not averse to child's pose, but when we use it as an excuse to get away from something else, <laughs> then I have a challenge because that's your mind trying to escape. Good. Walk yourself back up to hands and knees. That's right, molten nails. Don't try to get away. Downward facing dog. <laughs> Good, left ankle crosses in front of right thigh. So literally you guys, like you were doing cross-legged chair, that left foot should be off the floor, ankle pressing against the top of your right thigh, front of your right thigh, there you go. And then bend your right knee a lot. As the knees pull forward, your butt pulls back. Yeah, so pull your butt back. Don't let your ribs drop here. So if you're coming into that arched position, draw the low rib cage in. Fold through those thigh creases and then drop your hips lower towards your heel any amount. Good, throat up, Melanie and Sydney, both. Good, awesome, you guys. Good, and then slowly release, please. Unwinding the left leg, take it up and back behind you. Down dog split, nice. And then step the left foot between the hands. Good job, Teresa. Good, take that right foot a little wider to the right, drop the heel to 45 degrees, warrior one. So come up the way you normally would, the way you like. Good. And then straighten your front thigh and start to reset for what allows your pelvic bones, the front of your pelvic bones to be level with each other facing straight ahead. So for a lot of us, that means the right foot has to go wider to the right than we think that it should. And we have to turn those toes slightly forward. So Melanie, turn your back toes forward a little more. Good, Debbie, you got it. And then arms are up to the sky, please. Legs are straight, good. Take your elbows out wide to cactus arms and then start to twist to your left. So you're twisting towards that front leg. So as you twist, what happens, right? Your back hip, your right hip starts to spin forward. That's exactly what we want. This is why we're doing it. So as you twist, draw the low ribs in. So you're really drawing that left low belly wide and you're letting the right rib cage go forward, right? So we're setting ourselves up to be able to be neutral in a slightly twisted position, if that makes any sense. Good. So I want you to maintain this feeling of twisting to the left through your left side of your trunk, but then let your shoulders turn back towards the top of your mat. There's the little bit of the twist. Good. And then arms go straight up to the sky. Bend your front knee. Come back to that full warrior one position. Pull the inner thighs apart. Keep lifting your hip points and keep drawing that left side of your trunk wide to the left. So almost like you're trying to twist, but then you're bringing your shoulders back to center. Nice. Good, you guys. And then take your torso forward, parallel to the floor. Nice, Melody. Nice, Diane. Take your arms back behind you. Good, a little more weight on that back leg, Sandy. Yeah, there you go. Squeeze those hands towards each other like you've got a block between them. Lift the arms a little higher up and back behind you and then lift your chest forward and up. Good, move the weight of your hips back so you're actually pressing into that back foot more. Good, lift your hands a little higher again and squeeze. Nice, chest forward and up, hug, relax your jaw. 
Good. <laughs> and then release the hands down to the floor. Spin your back heel up. Nice job, you guys. Right hand plants, left arm to the sky. Spinal twist. Jen, just watch that your knee is over your ankle, so you might have to shorten your lunge a tiny bit. There you go. Good, you guys. Release the hand back down to the floor. Good. Both hands inside the front foot. Drop your back knee. Nice. Flex that left foot. Drop onto the baby toe side of the foot, letting the knee go wide, walking the hands forward any amount. Make sure here that, again, your hips are slightly in front of that back knee so that you get the, the actual angle on your front thigh. So if you're too far out, your foot is too far out, it's going to be a very awkward angle for your hip. So you have to bring your pelvis forward more. Good. And or draw your heel closer in towards your pelvis. Nice, you guys. And then relaxing any amount here, breathing into those big muscles and practicing not judging what it feels like. Totally okay to say like, oh, that feels tight, that's uncomfortable. But if your mind starts to go into that place where it says it's uncomfortable and I hate it, hmm, maybe leave that last part out. Or simply let it move through you and say, okay, and also this is for my benefit. If something is innately good for you, it will come back, but it'll come back in a way that is sweet. So everything that we make the offering of, or that we let go of in ourselves, we soften the attachment. If it really has a place in our life, it will come back, but it will come back in a way that is simple and sweet, uncomplicated. So you return to the place in you that is able to receive everything in that way where it is uncomplicated, not painful. That's how it says, the yogi says, you want your experiences to be uncolored or not painful. Not that they're all good, just not painful. Don't make it difficult for yourself. One more breath. Good. And then walk your hands back in. Please take that foot back to flat. Lift the back knee up. Beautiful. Step back to downward facing dog. Nice, you guys. Slide forward to plank pose. Lower down slow to your belly, coming through knees first if you need. Good. And then bend both knees, kick your heels in towards your butt, press those thighs down, hands alongside your ribs, begin to lift up head, neck, and chest for cobra. So your hands are, are flat on the floor for cobra. Lift up head, neck, and chest with the knees bent, press your thighs down to the floor. Good. Nice. Low belly draws in. Again, you're probably not going to be able to come as high in this version of cobra. I don't mind. Pull your heels in, press your thighs down. Good. You're working to stretch that line through the thigh up into the pelvis. Nice. And then release all the way back down to your belly, please. Good. Come up onto your forearms for Sphinx pose. And if your lower back is a little cranky still, take your feet wider in Sphinx. So take them as wide as your mat, big toes as wide as your mat if your lower back is still cranky. If your lower back is not particularly cranky or just the normal amount of cranky, keep your legs in line with your hips. Press down into your forearms. Drag back, lift your chest, navel in, low navel in. Nice, you guys. Good. So there's this lovely um, suggestion or this lovely image that in yogic ceremonies, pujas, that type of thing, where you are celebrating the divine, whatever version of the divine is that you make an offering usually of some type of food to that being. And then as it's offered to God first throughout the ceremony, it's considered blessed. And then at the end of the ceremony, it's given back to everybody who participated. It's called prasad. So whatever you give up, right, as an offering to yourself, the divine self, doesn't have to be an outside divine force, it can be your own. Whatever comes back to you will come back sweeter. Good, you guys. Turn your right forearm parallel to the top of your mat, please. Bend your left knee, kick your heel in towards your butt, reach back left hand for the foot or the ankle. Good. Nice, and you're still pressing through that right forearm, so you're lifting the chest as much as you can, so don't collapse towards the floor. 
Good, and you're pressing that left thigh down to the floor. So don't lift the knee up, keep it rooted down. And the heel can either press all the way down in towards your butt, or, and this is gonna be my suggestion for you, Lauren, is to actually kick your foot back into your hand because you have enough um, thigh flexibility that the stretch right there is probably not doing much for you. So press down through the thigh, kick your foot back into your hand and draw your low belly in and up, try and lift your hip points forward and you're gonna feel a little more. So do more backwards pressure with the foot. Good, nice you guys. And then slowly release, <laughs> forehead to the floor please. Stretch the arms reaching back towards your feet, palms facing down. Locust pose, you're not reaching for your feet. Press through the front of your pelvis, float the legs up off the floor, legs straight. Good, and then from your low belly, again, from your low rib cage, pull yourself, hover almost above the floor from your top of your, sorry, the front of your torso, and then lift the shoulders and chest, float the arms up. So there's a difference, right? If you push forward through your ribs here to try and get your chest up, you're going to shorten your back. So I want you to pull up through the front of your ribs, almost like the only point of you that's touching the floor is the front of your pelvis. Pull everything else in and up. Good, stretch those legs straight on you, as straight as you can. There you go. And then release all the way back to your belly, please. Nice, take a moment, make a pillow with your hands if you'd like. Good, breathing into the lower back. Maybe even breathing into what then comes secondarily to you as a place that is tight. Because it's rarely that our lower back just happens to hurt for no reason. Right? Something is contributing to it. So it might be that you feel and the more you breathe that there's something going on with your middle back or something in your shoulder. Maybe there's a hip that feels like it's a little bit tighter than the other. This is the returning that yoga talks about is that when your mind is not so stuck on just trying to get what it wants, it's not in a state of want, then it can return to that state that's just being, that's just feeling. And then what is a legitimate need, what is legitimately of service to your body and your mind is you know it. And you can still enjoy whatever you enjoy, but it no longer has that hold on you. So this is why we fast. It's to remove that layer of wanting from the mind. And that only works if we're not doing it with a mentality that says I'm restricting myself because it's good for me. Because I'm letting go so that I can feel what's underneath. Still might not be easy, but at least you're, you're bringing an element of a loving feeling into the practice instead of a, oh, I hate that I want this. Fast from your judgment. Bring your forehead back towards the floor, please. Come back up onto your forearms for Sphinx. Got a quad stretch on the other side to do. Good. Nice. So left forearm crosses parallel to the top of your mat. Bend your right knee, reach back to the foot of the ankle. That should be the second side. If it's not, do the other side, <laughs> whatever the other side is for you. Good. So again, you're pressing through that left forearm. So you're keeping your chest nice and lifted. You can absolutely be working to bring that heel towards the glute, so towards your butt. If you already have very open quads, however, my suggestion is to push that foot back against your hand. So your heel might not be touching your butt. It might be a more open stretch. So you kick that foot back into your hand, add that backwards resistance, press down through the top of your thigh, the top of your knee. Good, and then you're lifting your hip point forward and up. So almost like you're trying to take that back leg more towards what dancer pose might look like. Good, and again, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, stay where you are. Breathe through everything. Good. Nice, you guys. Nice, Teresa. Good job, Allison. And then slowly release, please release the foot. Release the hand, forehead to the floor, stretch your arms reaching back, locust pose again. Good, stretching out through the legs. So again, the front of the pelvic bones are pushing down and forward, but your inner thighs are lifting straight up 
and your inner edges of your legs. So straight down those inner seams of the pants are pulling towards the back of your mat and then lift the inner thighs. So you take your legs up off the floor and then begin to lift head, neck and chest, but pull up through your low rib cage. So it's like you're trying to press the back of your heart up towards the sky, the back of your rib cage up to the ceiling. Good, and then just drop your chin neutral to the floor. Good, so the back of your throat pulls up, but you can push through the top of your head and feel the space between your neck and your shoulders get longer. Good, nice, Danielle. Beautiful. And then slowly release. Nice job. Press yourself back up to hands and knees. Good. Circle your hips. Circle, circle, circle your hips. Beautiful. Circle them the other way. Good. And then come back to stillness, please. Downward facing dog, lift the hips. Good. Right foot steps forward between the hands, lunge. Good, drop your back heel to flat parallel, paralleling the baby toe to the back of your mat. Take the arms up to warrior two. So shoulders come on top of the hips, arms are wide. Good, nice. So the front knee is bent over the ankle in line with second or third toe. Good, squeeze your feet towards each other, please. And inhale both arms up to the sky as you do straighten the legs. So take the arms all the way up, straighten the legs as though you are preparing for triangle. And then as you exhale, stay lifted through your side body, bend the front knee again, come back to warrior two, let your arms go wide. And as your arms stretch wide, pull the arms in, the arm bones in. Good, inhale, come all the way back up to arms alongside your ears, straighten the leg. Good, pull up through your side body. And then stay lifted as you start to bend the knee again, come back to warrior two. Good, so there's a widening that's happening, right? Inhale, come all the way up, straightening the leg, reaching the arms up, get tall through your side body, lift through that right hip point, and then bend the knee again, pointing it at second or third toe. Don't let it roll in. So Sarah, move your knee a little wider. Good, one more time, take the arms all the way up, straightening the leg, pulling up through the side body. Good, and then exhaling, coming back to warrior two, widening the inner thighs, stretching wide through the arms, but hugging the shoulders inward. Good, arm bones in. Nice job. Where is your gaze at this moment? Yeah, following the dog. <laughs> Where is your inner gaze at this moment? Better question. You're like, I don't know. Notice, what is your mind fixated on? It's okay if it's fixated on your thighs or your knees or whatever. But notice where your mind is fixated. And then can you feel your breath? Oh yeah, I'm still breathing. Good, straighten that front thigh, please. Extend through the rib cage, come forward for triangle pose. So reaching through the side body, right hand touches down to the floor, left arm comes to the sky. Good, right hand can of course be on the front leg or a block if reaching the floor is not a possibility. Good. Or put your hand on your dog, it also works. Nice, you guys. Just for a moment, take your left hand to your left hip. So that's the arm that's in the air, take it to your top hip and then push your hip up into your hand. Good, round through those side ribs. Yeah, squeeze your feet towards each other. Yep, and then take that left shoulder and stack it even more on top of the right. Good, and now extend that left arm back up to the sky. Nice job. Good, you guys, then bend that right knee, please release both hands down to the floor. Good, spin your back heel up, downward facing dog. Beautiful, vinyasa if you'd like, child's pose if that feels like the better option. So the vinyasa sliding forward to plank, lowering down to your belly, rising up cobra or locust pose. If locust pose felt really good, stick with it. It's great for the lower back. Good, and then come back to downward facing dog when you are ready or when you are finished. Good. Then left foot steps forward between the hands. Nice, back heel comes flat, baby toe parallels back of your mat, bring the arms up to warrior two, shoulders are over the hips, arms reaching out. 
And again, you're looking for this feeling of extending out through the arms. So pull your arms out as far as you can. So you feel like, okay, I'm pulling my arms in both directions out of my chest, out of my shoulders. And now hug the arm bones in. So squeeze them in towards the center of your back. So you feel your chest wake up, but you're still pulling the fingers long. Good. Now straighten both legs. Take your arms up alongside your ears. Good. Pull through your side waist, pull in through your low rib cage. So you're not arching your spine and then bend the front knee again. Take the arms wide warrior two, but stay as lifted as you can weightless in your warrior two. Good. And then straighten the leg again. Take the arms all the way up. Nice. Carla ribs in. Good. And then bend the knee again. Come back to warrior two like you are weightless. Good. And then inhaling, straighten the leg, taking the arms up, pull longer, squeeze the feet towards each other. And then bend the knee again. Don't stop squeezing the feet towards each other. Just widen the thighs and drop into that expanded state, that expanded position. Good. One more time. Straighten the front leg. Stretch the arms. Stretch the side body. Good. And then bend the knee again, coming back to warrior two. So the purpose of that, right, moving in and out of the pose is that often we get into a position like this and we just lock in, right? We lock our legs in, we lock our pelvis in. And then it hurts and we say, ah, I guess warrior two just hurts. So you have to move yourself in and out of poses. You have to move yourself in and out of those places in your mind that say, I just want to grasp. I just want to stay stuck. Say, okay, we move in and out. Just for a little bit, we're going to let that go. And always come back. Good, you guys. Straighten that front thigh, please. And then reach through the left side rib. So extend forward like you're reaching beyond the toes of the front foot. And then let that left hand touch down wherever it naturally does. All right. So the floor, if that's available, front leg block. Small animal, small child, whatever you've got available. Good. Nice, you guys. Even here, try and find where your low rib cage is drawing in. So you're taking the front of the body and you're drawing it back to support the back of the body. Squeeze your feet towards each other. Good. Nice, Sarah. And then right hand comes to your right hip just for a moment. Good. Push that hip up into your hand so that, again, you're rounding through that side body and you're getting the pelvis a little bit more awake. You're getting the legs a little bit more awake. Nice. Good, Teresa. Good, Melody. Good, Debbie. Throat back, Diane. Good. And then stretch that right arm back up to the sky. Beautiful. Good, Pam. And then go ahead and bend that front knee. Release both hands down to the floor. Spin your back heel up. Step back downward facing dog. Good. And then walk the feet forward towards your hands again. Standing forward fold. Good. Opportunity here for crow pose. So separate your feet nice and wide. If crow is not in your vocabulary today and you want to just hang out and squat or about a kanasa, that's perfect. But opportunity for crow here. So separate your feet nice and wide. You can start from that squat position if you'd like. So drop the hips down into squat and then plant the hands in front of you. You got to lift your butt just a little bit if you're coming into crow. Good, come up on your tippy toes. As the hands plant, the elbows bend, hug the upper arms, lean forward. So your elbows come in line with your wrists. This is important. And squeeze those arms and shoulder blades towards the middle of your back. Scoop your belly round. And then start to squeeze through your belly. Draw those knees as high up towards your armpits as you can and hug. And maybe the hips, the feet float up off the floor. Again, if crow's not in your vocabulary, hang out and squat or come into Baddha Konasana. Good. Again, the suggestion for crow is because this action is actually really good for opening the lower back, actually really good for opening the outer hips. So even if you're not taking your feet all the way off the floor, just going into the position, rounding the back, squeezing the legs, really helpful. Good. Nice, Diane. I like that. Good, Ludmilla. Nice, Lena. And then slowly release. Come on down. Nice job, Lauren. Good, Carla. Good. Come on down to sit, everybody. Nice job. Stretch your legs out in front of you just for a moment. Yep. Give them a shake. Flex your feet. Good. Inhale the arms up to the sky. Legs out straight in front of you. And then bow forward, Paschimottanasana, pressing down through the thighs, pressing back through your seat. Good. 
and then holding your ankles or your feet or whatever you can have hold of, but hold something. Good. Use that grip and start to round your back here. Good. So pull your low rib cage back and in, pull your belly back away from your thighs. You can still stay deep, still stay deeply folded forward, but pull back, round through your back of your spine. Good. Keep the head dropped. Nice. So same energy, right? If you weren't doing this in crow pose, you can certainly do it in a pose like this, where again, you round into all of those spaces instead of pushing through them. Nice. And then slowly release. Come on out. Good. All right. So bend both knees, please. Fire log, Agni Stambhasana. So you're going to stack. Ideally, we say it's ankle over knee, knee to ankle. So right leg stacks on top of left. And again, if you can place the ankle on the left knee, uh, that's perfect. And you can use props underneath the right knee if necessary, if it's not resting comfortably. If that variation does not work for you, you can move the knees a little wider. So your right heel is into your left thigh, sorry, not thigh, knee crease, legs go a little wider, or you can sit cross-legged right shin in front of left, flexing the feet. So your choice. Agni Stambhasana, fire log pose. Yeah, so sometimes we call it double pigeon. So ankle over knee. Still seated. Yep, ankle over, over knee, knee over. Exactly, you got it, Lauren. Yep, not full lotus. <laughs> you can do full lotus, but that's not what we're going for. All right, whatever your position is, find it. <laughs> flex your feet. Hands can either rest alongside your hips or if forward folding here makes sense, go ahead and take a forward fold. Good. So Anju, if it works for you, just sit cross-legged with your right shin in front of your left. So both knees bent. Yeah. Right shin in front of left, flex both feet. Yeah. That's just a softer variation of the same position. Good. Nice, you guys, and breathe into your lower back. Again, here, the idea is not how much can I push myself to try and get somewhere in this pose, but by being in this pose, how much can I breathe into the space of my hips, my lower spine? And how much can I watch my mind and how it wants to judge this experience? Either it's comfortable or it's not comfortable. I like it or I don't like it. My hips are good or my hips are bad. My lower back is broken. No, it isn't. I'll never be good at yoga. Don't be ridiculous. <laughs> this is what we're asked to do is to, is to allow ourselves to be in a place that is not judging the experience that we're having. And that practice of fasting is to help the mind understand that letting something go helps you come back to something that is innately sweeter, quieter, simpler. Just like the head monk, I'm separating this for you for your benefit. Giving your mind a chance to come out of that place of wanting so that you can feel so where is your mind fixated right now? Cats and dogs. <laughs> Take one more breath and gratefully come out of the pose, not with the grateful, thank God it's over, <laughs> but grateful that did something, right? And then take the legs out in front of you just for a moment, unwind them, give them a little shake. Give them a little pat down. Good. And then set yourself up for the second side. So now the left leg is gonna cross on top of the right ankle to knee or heel into the knee crease or sitting cross-legged left shin in front of right fire log. Agni Stambhasana. Try to set it up, especially those of you who can get into that full ankle on knee position. Try to set it up so that you are flexing your foot in a way where your ankle is in a straight line so that your foot isn't curling or sickling, we call it. 
So try to set that up so that your ankle stays in a straight line. Good. And then again, hands can rest just alongside your hips and you can just sit and breathe or forward fold if that is available to you. Good. Do you want to block for you? For under that knee? No? Okay. Yeah, it kind of makes sense. Good, you guys. Again, you're breathing into your lower back so that whatever restriction there is in this pose does not become the only experience. Your mind can be at rest with whatever comes to you, whether it is the most delicious meal or molten nails. Your mind sees no difference you're free from attachment, then you can do whatever the heck you want. Enjoy whatever the heck you want because it doesn't disturb you. But our practice until we get there is, can I let go a little bit of the things that my mind demands, that it says, I need this, I want this so much. I'm so disturbed if I don't have it. We work through our disturbance. That's what fasting is. It's not about what you're letting go of. The thing that you're letting go of is not innately bad, but it gives you the chance to return to what's been underneath the whole time. And that's where we get into our big challenge as yogis is if we don't want to return to that inner world because we've judged it to be somewhere that we don't want to be or that isn't good to begin with, then we come back to the bigger practice of fast from your judgment. We return to what is quieter and simpler. And from there, you can reemerge into the world as your real self, your best self. Go ahead, take one more breath where you are. And again, grateful for whatever the pose did do. Not that you're getting out of it. <laughs> Walk yourself back up. You can be a little happy that you're getting out of it. That's all right. And then unwind your legs, please. And take your legs out in front of you. Bring them nice and wide. Good. You can always be happy if something was uncomfortable and you're like, yay, it's not there anymore. <laughs> just don't judge it that the discomfort is something that made it bad. It's just discomfort. All right. Legs nice and wide. Wide straddle. Good, and then bend your knees. So dig your heels down and drag back so your knees pop up off the floor. Good, check that your toes are not rolling towards the floor. So baby toes have a tendency here to roll outward. Try and draw your inner thighs down and in. So your toes are gonna pull slightly in. Good, and then walk yourself forward, forward fold. Opportunity, if you come pretty low in your forward fold here, keep your knees bent, keep the knees up. Is that if you want to thread the arms underneath the raised knees here, you can. Good. If you are someone who plays around with tortoise and you want to, if your belly comes pretty close to the floor here and the arms can go underneath the knees, you can start to walk the feet forward towards each other like you're going to cross your ankles over your head. So that's an option. Again, if you have no idea what I'm talking about, stay where you are, breathe into your lower back and love that. <laughs> I am not a cat. You are not a tortoise. You're just pretending. Good. Nice, Lauren. Again, the opportunity of that tortoise position is that you get to squeeze in, hug in, round into your back. Big hip opening. One more breath. Good. And then start to straighten your legs. If you are not in that bound tortoise position, just straighten the legs out in front of you, still in the forward fold and walk yourself towards your right thigh. So you're walking your belly over your right thigh. If you are in tortoise, unwind yourself legs wide, and then walk the belly to the right. Good. Moving from the low space of your navel. Nice. So Jen, just lift your right rib cage a little higher. So you're really twisting from the lowest part. Good. Awesome, you guys. Nice, Laura. Good, Sydney. 
Thank you, Pam. Good, walk back towards center, please, and go to your left. So walking the belly over the left thigh. Again, turning from your waist, you're not just kind of leaning haphazardly over your left thigh, but you're turning from the lowest part of your waist, your whole belly, your whole torso towards that left leg. And keep your right butt cheek anchored to the floor. Good. Nice, you guys. Now walk yourself back to center, please. And all the way back up, release the forward fold. Beautiful. All right, scoop forward on your mat, please. Bend your knees. If you have a bolster handy and you want to use a bolster for this, you can. It's We're doing a twist. Um, but it's really nice to use a bolster if you have one. So if you have one laying around close to you and you want to use it, then place that bolster behind you. So you're sitting towards the top of your mat. Bolster can be behind you. Good. And feet nice and wide, knees bent. You're going to drop both knees to the right. Yep. And then you're going to walk your torso around the same direction that your knees are pointing. Yep. Until you are facing the back of your mat. And here, if you have a bolster, you pull it up against the side of your hip, rest the side ribs and or chest and belly on the bolster, depending on how deeply you're twisting. If you don't have a bolster, don't be sad about it. Just keep twisting, resting on the forearms, facing the back of your mat. Good. So again, the bolster, if you have it, is ideally under your belly or your chest. If you have no bolster, you're resting on your forearms. Good. And you're breathing into everything. Beautiful. Kind of enjoy that again in the historical sense that that day before Lent begins is, you know, the day that is typically it's Mardi Gras or it's uh, Fat Tuesday, they call it. So the day to overindulge because you know that you're going to fast. <laughs> that kind of ping ponging that we want to remove from the mind that we don't go from overindulging to fasting to overindulging to fasting keeps us in a state of want. So what you are letting go of are those things that keep you in a state of want. And then whatever rises up in response to that, there's nothing wrong with it. There'll be frustration. There'll be the tendency to just want to go back to what is normal, to what's easy, to what feels like it is your regular reality. might be a lot of things that come up because that's what was buried in, within, or underneath the attachment itself. But what you return to underneath all of that is a place that is quieter, simpler. And then whatever version of that thing is, it can re-enter your life from that place of simplicity if it's necessary. And if it's not, then you gratefully let it go, it served its purpose. One more deep breath. And then start to walk yourself back up, come back to center. You can pause for a moment if you'd like, but you're coming into the twist on the other side. So keeping the feet nice and wide on your mat, drop the knees to the left, walk yourself around, same direction your knees are pointing until you face the back of your mat. And again, you are pulling that bolster up towards your hips so that you can rest the side body or the belly on the bolster. And if there's no bolster, you're resting on your forearms. Good. If having the legs really widely separated here doesn't feel good, you can, of course, start to stack the knees. It will take some of the kind of stretch out of the thigh. We'll take some of the intensity of the stretch out of the back is totally fine if it brings you to a place that is less painful, if you are in pain. But do your best to breathe as wide as you can. Take 
make any and all excuses to practice. So maybe you don't fast for 40 days or however long it is. I think it's 40 days. Maybe you don't do it for as long. But take the opportunity while the energy is there, a shared collective energy is there to fast. Maybe do a one day silent fast for yourself. Let go of something. And let yourself return to the simpler place inside that is underneath the wanting. Take one more breath and slowly begin to release, coming all the way back up. So the option for those of you who have your bolster with you is we're going to come down to the floor for Shavasana. So if you would like to take Shavasana on your bolster, laying on it, you're welcome to do that. You know, alternatively, if you're on your back, place your bolster underneath your knees to help uh, relieve the lower back. If that's still an area that is a little cranky finding your way onto your backs. Good, if you need any final positions there, happy baby is a great choice. Or holding the ankles or gomukhasana where you cross the thighs and separate the feet. Good. And you are finding your way to your Shavasana. And again, come back to the awareness of the breath and how it wants to move. Come back to the acknowledgement that the more you let go of control, your mind might spin wildly for a moment or two. But it will start to return to a state that is quieter, simpler. So follow your breath wherever it wants to go, however it wants to go.
Very gently. Awareness deepening with your breath. The body begin to stretch and move in whatever ways serve it well. And as you're ready, draw the knees in towards your chest and roll to your right side. And take a moment before you begin to push the floor away, come back to an upright seated position. Bring the hands together in front of the heart center, palm to palm. Or whatever mudra has been working well for you if this one is not your favorite. So we are in the season where we have the opportunity to practice and never miss an opportunity to practice. The chance is to fast from something so that you can observe your mind when it is in its state of wanting. And you can observe what happens as you lovingly let something go so that you can come back to that simpler, quieter place. You can watch how much your mind runs through that judgment. So physically fasting is wonderful. You can let something physically go that is maybe making your body feel not so great. But if you can mentally or emotionally practice fasting, letting go of the tendency to anger, the tendency to complain, the tendency to judge. That's a very powerful place to be. So even if you're not going to choose to do a very conscious, direct, limited form of fasting, maybe do that. Start to observe your mind as it judges and just release the grip on that a little bit so that you can return. Again, what's important is not what we're letting go of, it's what we return to, a place that is quieter, that is simpler, and that is innately you, all of your goodness, no judgment about what maybe is wrong. So this is what we practice and you can lead yourself back there. So in any way you can let go of your grip on something so you can return. And when your mind is free from that desire, that wantingness, then you can enjoy everything completely. No worries that it's going to disrupt you. So go to that quiet place, return to it. Close the sound of Om, deep breath in. Sliding the thumbs up to the space between the eyebrows. Namaste, everybody. Hey, thank you guys so, so much. Have a great rest of your day, great rest of your week until I see you again. If you're staying for meditation, you don't have to go off. You can stay on if you want. We'll begin at 11. If uh, you're not, I will see you when I see you. <laughs>